we're getting set for the start of the big one to Crick Buzz Live in association with our fantasy partner, My 11 Circle. And I'm talking about a team today that I hope does better than it has in recent times. And maybe just to show solidarity, I'm wearing pink today because I'm talking about Rajasthan and they've been, well, I mean, they, they realize the fact that they've been miserable too. Seventh one year, eighth one year. I mean, they started with a bang last year, but like a firecracker, you know, it wasn't a luddy, it was just a firecracker, boom, and then there was nothing else to follow. So what can we look forward to if you're fans of Rajasthan this year? I'm afraid the first thing you're seeing is a whole, not a structure. Every team wants to build a structure that will take them through this grueling tournament. But the biggest thing that you see right in front of you is the whole. And that is Jofra Archer. In a losing side, in a side that finished at the bottom, Jofra Archer was the MVP. He was the player of the tournament. And in the power plays, Archer was at one level and there was nobody else. Archer delivered 10 wickets, economy rate of 4.25. The others were going at an economy rate greater than 10. Archer then had to come back, bowl the end overs, where Rajasthan have been the most expensive in the last two years, at 11.34, 11.6. And so suddenly you take away Archer and you say, oh, okay, but our plans were built entirely around Archer. In fact, they thought Archer and Morris. That was the reason I think Rajasthan went out on a limb, paid such a lot of money for Morris, because that would address their biggest weakness which is the bowling at the death and they thought Archer and Morris could have done that. In fact, I, I remember during uh, the uh, India-England series, I was doing a post-game interview with uh, Jofra Archer and I asked him, do you see yourself as the leader of the attack? I didn't, I didn't bring up any tournament or anything. I just said, do you see yourself as a leader of the attack for England? And he said, uh, no, not in this England side, but when I play for Rajasthan, I do. And suddenly the leader has gone. What implication does that have? Rajasthan have done well to look at uh, someone like Andrew Tai as a backup. Uh, I know you might look and say Tai is always expensive, but in the last couple of years, in fact the last year or so, Andrew Tai has done something that every bowler with a good slower ball has to do, which is he's got the fast delivery up again. So Andrew Tai has touched 150 sometimes, but if, and if Tai can bowl over 140, then the slower ball becomes important and Tai becomes once again the bowler that made him famous in the first place. Plus remember, if he's coming at 9, he can tong some big, uh, big ones. But it now means that Tai has to play and it places a greater load on Chris Morris. He's been, he's been a wonderful player. I mean, in, in the last two years, the big change with Morris is that his economy rates and the death are getting better. 8.4, 7.7 in his, in his last two seasons. Now he'll have to play that big role and Morris and Tai together. What he's also got to ensure is that he's shoring up the end overs batting. Because with Rajasthan last year, they went hard at the top and suddenly there was very little to follow. So, three all-rounders in the side this year. The availability of Stokes for the entire season is a huge plus. If Tevatia can have another good season, then Stokes, Tevatia and Morris just fills that lineup a little bit. The other issue they had was losing too many wickets up front. I thought they went hard because of those three games they played in Sharjah. They just continued that plan and they kept losing wickets one after the other. So one of the issues that they need to address is, we've got Butler, we've got Stokes. I've got no doubt in my mind Butler is the better opening batsman than Stokes. But they went with Stokes last time. So do, do they say, we'll play Yashasvi Jaiswal at the top along with one of Butler and Stokes, the other batting at four, so we've got a bit of buffer in case we lose wickets. Or do they say we'll go hard with Butler and Stokes up front, Samson at three, and then hope that the batting in the form of, uh, of a Lomro or a Dube or a Parag will come good. In either situation, in the top six, they've got three very good players. They want consistency from Samson though. Samson, you look at him and your mouth waters and it's almost as if someone has said only one Jalebi, not more. So I want a lot more from Samson. If Samson can achieve consistency, then Stokes, Butler, Samson in the top six, along with three youngsters, either of uh, Yashasvi Jaiswal, Shivam Dube, Mahipa, Lomror, uh, Riyan Parag, they'll have to have a big tournament before they come into Tevatia and, and Morris. Kartik Tyagi was very good last time. Now here's something interesting. If Kartik Tyagi can have a good season, if Jaydev Unatkar can come back to having the season that we know he can, they could actually play only Morris as the overseas fast bowler and play someone like Liam Livingston who's a really good bowler, gives you a little bit of off spin which they don't have because they only have leg break bowlers in the side. So a little bit of Liam Livingston would be crucial, take away the inexperience in the middle order but for that to happen, the quicker bowlers, the Indian quicker bowlers have to bowl well. 
they'll have to go back to Shreyas Gopal with his leg spin. Maybe Mayank Markande. Markande is not a bad bowler at all. So Shreyas Gopal and Rahul Tevatia, but with Stokes available throughout the season, they have the sixth bowler as well. And that is why I suspect Rajasthan could have a better season this year than they did, uh, than they did last time. Let's take a look at where Rajasthan are playing their games. They play their first five in Mumbai. They won't mind playing there at all. Butler, Stokes, Samson, Morris, they love playing on those tracks with that extra bounce, easy to hit boundaries. They revel in those conditions. But then almost immediately thereafter, they go to Delhi and they've got to play four matches there. And as it turns out, I think they've made a good selection as well because they could then easily replace Stai with someone like a Mustafizur Rahman. Or if Morris needs a break, they've got the Fizz. I think the Fizz could be handy on those surfaces as well. So there's another uh, judicious selection there from uh, Rajasthan. So here's my starting 11 for, for the Royals. I'm actually saying, I think I know what the Royals think about going hard up front. Maybe just go Butler Stokes, both up front. Samson at three, and then expect uh, a little bit of backup. I think Dubey is, is, is a decent player. So Lombroad is a good player. Lombroad, Dubey, and Rian Parag. Uh, you can get maybe an over from Parag, but you've got Stokes in there. Then the power in the end of Tevatia and Morris. Then you go Gopal, Karthik, Tyagi, and Andrew, uh, and Andrew Tai. Is there a player who can, you know, that X Factor player who can turn things around? They want Morris to be that player. Chris Morris with the bat, with the ball, playing a leadership role and most important, staying injury free. I think it's a decent side. Uh, I think a lot will depend on the captain. Remember, it's a very young, inexperienced captain. Samson's been leading Kerala, but to lead a side with big stars in it, that's not going to be easy for Samson. And I'll be waiting to see whether he's able to combine the uh, twin responsibilities of leadership and batting to win back his place in the India side. Maybe that is why they've got Sangakara back in there as someone to help uh, uh, help someone like Samson along. But uh, Rajasthan at this stage, I'm not sure they have the power to go through all the way. But I think if they can play to potential this year, they'll be a far more dangerous side than they were last year.